Good morning everyone on the interwebs. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. Today we're going to be tackling kind of another small project but a necessary one to get my brother's old car back to dra daily driver status and that is we are going to work on replacing the passenger side view mirror, the entire assembly. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is the passenger mirror or the, the solution my brother put in place after it got damaged. And I don't remember the backstory, but the, uh, as you can see, the glass is busted and his particular model of Fusion had plastic covers that went over the side view to make the color match the rest of the vehicle. So this should have been a silver cover plate and it's gone. And when we did our homework and we looked up how much it would cost to replace the glass, which that wasn't too, too bad. You can find that most anywhere. And then try to replace this silver color uh, cover so it'll match everything. It wound up being $40, $50. And we recently, when we went on our little journey to go get the transmission that's going to go in this vehicle... At that salvage yard, they sold us a perfectly good full assembly for 30 bucks. Good glass. I mean, the color doesn't quite match, but glass is good. Everything about it's good. The weather stripping's good. And 30 bucks. So we said sold. And that was that. So today, we're, the focus is going to be to remove this old side view mirror and then install the new one and then we'll test make sure it's good and then life will be grand following the lines of this inside panel that the other side of it's going to have our bolts for the side view mirror we see we get in there that the panel actually goes under the door card. So to do this correctly, the door card's got to come out. And to that note, we got to look for screws. Can't just go in here and start ripping willy-nilly. We'll break stuff. So we got a Torx right there. And I suspect we have some Torx here. So you look closely in the corner. Probably the camera's not picking it up, but there's a little insert. That I think with a oh yeah see that comes right out sure enough we have a hex right there so that's gonna be I don't know like a five millimeter or something like that and if we come over here we have another Torx, give you a more wide angle so you can see where that is. And then, down here, we have another Torx. So these Torx, I went ahead and sized it. They are a, uh, maybe this will focus for me. Focus, focus. There we go. They're T20s. Wasn't sure about that guy, so I'll have to chase him down, but we'll go ahead and get the T20s out. I'll get that sized. I'll let you know what it is, and I'll bring you back. Okay, this is what I've pulled out so far. You'll see we got a short torque, some long torques, and then that turned out to be a 7 millimeter bolt or screw right there. I also went ahead and I disconnected the electrical on the, the door handle panel there with the locks just to get it out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. So that's what's come out so far. And the next step now is we've got to kind of pry and tug along the edges of the door panel to figure out what direction the plastic stops under it go. So it's it's a little different for every vehicle. Uh, my wife's Transit Connect van, uh, the door panel had to slide it had to slide towards the engine. And then it would pop off and 
on my old truck it's just a couple of screws and then you lift up to get it off so we may have to go up we may have to go up or left or right i'm gonna fiddle with it and i need both hands so i'll bring you back when i figure out the secret sauce it out gently pulling up top with my fingers and sure enough i was able to pull straight back there we go and these push pins along top are coming out which is good and with that extra visibility i'm able to see now see if it'll come up there we go there's a push pin there so i'm going to get my trim tool out and start wiggling around to get at these push pins so i don't accidentally tear the door card which some people call this an inside door panel some people call it a door card a couple different names that's what it is i call it a door card I think it's because back in the day when vehicles were more simple, it really was just a thin decorative panel. Didn't really have much else going on with it. Oh, and there we go. So on this vehicle, the push pins, as you can see, just go in and out. You don't have to slide on the one side or dance on your left pinky toe or anything like that and just go in and out so i'll probably disconnect the electrical there just so we can move the door card completely out of the way and now we have full access to that panel and we can get it out of the way safely i will bring you back okay our electrical panel down here or just our connector it's a simple push it down wiggle it out not a big deal and once I started pulling on this, it's just held in with a insert or two inserts. And again, we've got an electrical that is for the power mirror controls, so you can you know move the mirror around. So we'll disconnect that, and then as you can see, we're down to just three bolts. Eyeballing it, I'd say that's probably like a 10, maybe an 11 millimeter. I'll verify that in a minute, but we'll get the electrical out of the way. We'll get these bolts out of the way, and then we should be able to swap in the new mirror. All right, so I have taken two nuts off, and I have loosened the third, but haven't fully taken it off. Electrical's out of the way. It turned out the nuts were 11 millimeters. So this looks like it'll sit just fine with no fasteners on it, so we'll just go ahead and get the third one off I'm gonna put that there then kind of wiggle it may be a little stuck which is exactly what's going on oh right there is a there's an insert camera behave there's an insert on the other side of this that needs to pop off I saw it from looking at our replacement so this is the only thing holding our mirror in at the moment so, yep there it goes all right so there's the insert right there and it's not broken i just pop it out all right there we go so we'll go ahead and we will start reassembly though as soon as we get the mirror secure and we get electrical back in we'll go ahead and test the power mirror controls make sure that's okay because if the power mirror controls are busted, well, it's no good. Even though this mirror is all beat up and has weird replacement glass, the power mirror controls do work. So it's still serviceable. So let me go grab the other one. We'll get that in. We'll loose, put the nuts on loosely so it can't fall out. And then we'll do the test. Uh, when you go to put this back in, you've got two alignment guides. You've got the insert up top, and then there's an alignment pin towards the bottom. So you get those two in correctly, your mirror shouldn't fall off, even if you have no fasteners on it. So when we mosey on over here, you'll see that's where the insert goes. That's pretty obvious. And then our random little hole there, that's where our guide pin goes. So I will probably work on the guide pin first. That lined up. Where's my guide pin? All right. So that's going to go there. There's the guide pin. There's the insert. 
Okay. So I got the guide pin in. Got the insert in. All right. So is it in there tight? No, but it's gonna. It won't move. It won't run away on us until we get some fasteners in there. So you can see, drops right in. This actually came from a uh, came from a Milan, I believe. Or maybe it was another Fusion, I don't remember. Uh, it, okay, correction. This Milan mirrors are different. So this did come from a Fusion. But when we went, the place we went to, the transmission that we picked up came from a Milan. Turns out, because it came from a Milan, it was not affected with the valve body recall that a lot of the earlier 6F35s were hit with. I guess because the Milan transmissions came from a different source. Alright, let's pick this back up real quick. And get our electrical back in. Okay. All right, now we need a key. Key. And we're gonna, well, we may not actually need the key. I'm not sure. We're gonna mosey on over here. <sighs> All right, here is our power mirror control. Okay. So it looks like how this one works is you have that's left mirror, or that's driver. This is nobody. And that's passenger, I think. So let's listen. Okay, you may not be able to hear that, but I can. So it is working. Let me close the door so you guys can actually see stuff in action here. Let's do it carefully. All right, let's see if I can do this without breaking the trim panel. There, that'll work. Okay. So, keep your eyes on the mirror. Here we go. So, we have left and right. We have up we have down so we have a solid functioning mirror mission accomplished now we just got to put everything back together so snug down fasteners put that interior panel back in place reconnect all the electrical we took off put the door card back on and then we are done i'll bring you back when you do tighten these fasteners remember that this isn't a big load-bearing part and nor are these large fasteners so this elbow torque should be sufficient and also don't lock one all the way down at once kind of go around this will ensure that nothing gets misaligned as you're coming in for final torque I have learned through hard experience what can happen when you do that? Misalignment and things breaking. So just get that's feeling pretty good. Yeah, like that. And that feels good. Alright. So torque's in, and now next I'll put this panel back on. So it's uh the wiring sits in this little harness guide and I'm not pulling that out just gonna kind of get it in there make sure it clicks then it falls out of the harness guide anyway it makes you very sad now there are some extra wires here and that is because my brother put a sound system in here we're not worried about that we're just gonna Somehow with one hand get these naughty wires back in the guide. Right, let's see. Naughty wire one, two, three, back in the guide. 
Very good. Slide this up. Now, this piece also has an alignment pin right there. And our holes right there. And then this also has an insert. Goes right there. So, zoom out and you can see the whole picture here. Zoom. Be nice. There we go. And we're just kind of... Oh, we're stuck. We are stuck on tape. All right. I need two hands for this. I'll bring you back. After getting it around the tape, popped it back in. There you go. Next step, we're going to put the door card back in. So make sure you do not forget the electrical connector for the window that's on the other side of this. Make sure you thread your electrical back through for the door lock control. And as you work your way around and push, you should hear pops and clicks as stuff goes back in. Make sure you check all the way around. I'm just going to tap with my wrist. And looks like we got it. We're going to check our screw hole here, which again, it might be hard for you to see, but we actually have alignment with the threading over there. So, all right, let's get the screws back in and call it a day. And there you have it. Make sure that when you put these screws back in, put a light touch on it. You're trying to screw into plastic. You will strip it out if you go crazy on it. Um, I don't think actually this one needed to come out. Not 100%. I'll just throw that in there as my kind of my afterthoughts. But we've got everything back together. We got our screw back in on the side of the door card. We've got our screw back in on the bottom of the door card. The only parts I have left over are the original three nuts off the original mirror. And when I... Actually, let me go get the key. Because what you should do after you mess with electrical is do a systems check. Any electrical you played with, make sure it still works. So in our case, that means we need to test the window switch and the door lock switch and the power mirror control. So door lock switch, that works. And to do the other two, I have to come over to the driver's side. I have to get the key in for the windows. All right. Pay no attention to that. That's uh, something else I'm investigating. All right, before I put the key in, let's check our mirror control. Okay, I don't have the door open, but you should be able to hear that. Mirror's working. Last thing, we gotta check window control. So let's go back over. Beautiful. We have all the way up. And we have all the way down. All right. That is a successful repair. And the color is actually pretty close. You have to look a little closer to actually tell that it's not right. So I dig it. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for our side view mirror remove and replace on this 2010 Ford Fusion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did. That helps me grow and monetize the channel. And please leave a comment. Something you like, something you didn't like, something you think I could do better on. Let me know. I strive to improve, but I can't improve without feedback. So, with all that said, I will see you later.